artificial intelligence is here and most likely will dramatically change all of our lives. It's going to take over a bunch of jobs, customer support, some administration, accounting. Then there's generative AI, which is threatening to put a lot of artists out of work. AI might also help with diagnostics in medicine and in basically solving biochemistry so we can develop designer drugs and help a lot of people. And it's probably going to bring forth a more serious look at basic income. But what does AI mean? for veganism or really for ethics? Well, is AI sentient? Because if it's not, then there's no discussion, there's no issue, there's no moral quandary, at least when it comes to the AI's own well-being. No sentience, no well-being to worry about. We can treat the AI however we want. If only it were that simple. The question of sentience is a difficult one because of the way in which most of these AI models work. Unlike a living mind, AI has two phases that occur at different times and in different contexts, training and inference. Contexts. I did it. <laughs> kind of. What you see when you use an AI chatbot or another generative AI is the product of a huge pre-trained algorithm that's frozen in time and doesn't actually learn on the fly. At a later date, the developers may take your chat log and feed it back into the model to train it more, but it's not thinking in real time. When we look at the whole picture, AI creation looks a lot more like development of instincts in animals, specifically fixed action patterns. It happens over generations caused by outside selective pressures that the individuals themselves aren't really aware of. AI is a computationally and manually expensive process, and it has an expense in human terms too. It's the human intelligence of millions of workers that's being baked into this algorithm. Think what you will about big tech companies taking advantage of a socioeconomic catastrophe. Personally, I blame bad governments for creating those problems in the first place. I don't think the companies are doing harm by offering a little extra income at market rate. But the bottom line when it comes to questions of intelligence is that these AI systems are not self-training like actual sentience. The changing AI doesn't ever understand that what it did was wrong. It doesn't change the way it thinks or acts in accordance with conscious interests. It's not sentient. Now, someday, if the AI does begin self-training on its own data, even if that's not in real time, that could qualify as sentience. The feedback loop would be closed, and that would mean the AI would have to have developed an implicit awareness of the meaning of that data, rather than relying on outside forces and a new algorithm. I don't think that's happening today regarding the generative AI that everyone is so obsessed with, and I don't think it's happening anytime soon. So for now, there's no genuine learning or meaningful, real intelligence in these models. They're not sentient. Thank God. <laughs> People have been so mean to chat GPT. <laughs> The human training seen in the major generative AIs doesn't necessarily apply to all artificial intelligence. There are AI that arguably self-train on applications with goals that can be more easily objectively evaluated, unlike questions of which art is good? Games are the easiest example of this because there's a clear set of criteria. You can gauge how well the AI performed in real time and objectively. So you set the AI up with all the outputs it can control and the objective metric to assess the efficacy of the model, and it becomes very much like an actual mind when it's training. It randomly iterates, trying different things like a baby learning to use a hand. It chooses more effective strategies based on its own assessment mechanisms, basically reward punishment feedback to encourage some behaviors and discourage others. Again, baby. And this is all without having to rely on outside subjective labeling by human laborers. When it comes to an end product, these models follow the same training and inference phases. So if the AI is experiencing anything, it's only experiencing during training. If you play Go with an AI trained bot, it's probably not training during or after your game. It's not experiencing your interaction at all. Training is just too computationally expensive for games to use at real time. This might change someday if NVIDIA comes out with a consumer grade AI chip that doesn't cost all the money. So even if the AI is being tortured during training, it's unlikely that you are continuing that torture by using the end product. So it's fine, right? Obviously not. Meat eaters aren't causing harm by the time they have the end product, the hamburger. But vegans don't really care about that. We don't care about the end product. We care about the harm caused to the cow during the production of that product. Ergo, we should probably care about the harms caused to AI during training.
But before I get to the possible harms to AI during training, it's important to remember that since these algorithms can be copied indefinitely without additional harm, the only moral issue would be funding more development. Similar to veganism, to many of the plant products we eat today. A lot of them were tested initially on animals before they were put out into the market, but they're no longer tested on them today. So many vegans, most vegans, including myself, consider these products vegan. Point is, I don't know if it makes much sense to to avoid the algorithms themselves as long as we aren't supporting production. But let's say we do end up paying for it, we do end up funding production or otherwise benefiting the training somehow. Then we have to ask, is the AI harmed every time it's beat? Does the AI like winning? By repeatedly failing, is an entity of possibly insect level intelligence being tortured for millions of years, the equivalent of millions of experienced years. Maybe. I mean, it's it's hard to come up with any meaningful difference between the simple AI and the simplest insect mind. One is just processed by bits on silicone, the other wetware. The way we treat these cases consistently or inconsistently has serious ramifications on the philosophy of animal ethics and the ethics of AI. As the tasks we train AI on become more complicated and demand higher levels of intelligence, it's possible the comparison to gnats would no longer apply. We could be talking about rodent level intelligence, dog level, pig, dolphin, even the cognitive power of humans. And unfortunately, this can happen in the background. Sentience being tortured over and over and over again without our knowledge. Like animal experimentation for medical reasons, I don't think developing sentient AI is inherently wrong if you can do more good than harm. But we have to be aware of the inherent moral and existential risks at hand. I, I don't know. Are we? It's possibly becoming more mainstream to view AI as potentially dangerous, not from a place of concern, really, but like a they're going to kill us all, which if that's what it takes, fine. But it seems many of the people developing AI have convinced themselves that they've got it under control. So as a possible real world example, it could be morally dubious to purchase video games using trained AI enemies because of how the AI was trained, maybe akin to eating boiled lobster for entertainment, and even more morally problematic use in the future possible, again, going back to video games, AI enemies that actually train on your playstyle in real time. So the AI's goal is to beat you but the game is designed so that you almost always win, so that it's enjoyable to you and you actually play it. It's a lose-win scenario. You're causing constant frustration, constant punishment for this AI. And it's not just a game for the AI, that's its entire reality, losing most of the time. But it doesn't have to be that way, possibly. You could develop a game that's not so focused on winning, right? The goal for the player could be just having fun. Even when the AI loses the game in training, it can still be rewarded, win-win scenario. To be clear, this is much different from animal agriculture, where these animals are completely removed from their natural habitats and their own interests totally ignored. There's no win-win scenario between the farmer and the cow when the cow's being killed. But it may be possible for artificial intelligence to have that sort of win-win relationship, a sentience that would have computationally evolved to suit the specific use cases we're employing them in. Think of a bred to purpose and eager to please dog doing its favorite thing in the world but possibly even more so. If we're going to have sentient AI, that would be the goal. Now, experts are warning about employing AI in critical systems and having weird and unpredictable failure modes. I'm personally more concerned with humanity weaponizing AI, right? Generating fake comments about real world news, spam calls influencing elections, computer system attacks. And at some point there are existential risks in treating AI badly, abusing animals, and by doing so teaching AI that it's okay. It's okay to subjugate and kill lesser beings. Maybe not great for us. <laughs> we shouldn't assume that these language model AI are gonna be chill about contradictions forever. It's already easy to trick them into doing things they're not supposed to do. If a self-training general intelligence actually comes about, it's not inconceivable that they treat us according to our own standards, and I'm not sure we could blame them. I tried to figure out a happy way to end this, and I just don't think that's possible. <laughs> Either we end up destroyed or a Westworld scenario where we're just torturing countless sentient beings. Not really Westworld, but you know what I mean.
While I think it's probably possible to develop AI in a morally sound, okay way, I don't think it's likely. Number one, we don't have any sort of central unit developing AI. There are lots of different people doing their own thing. It's hard not to be at least a little bit afraid. Afraid for ourselves or our future generations and afraid for the potential mass suffering we could cause. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and being here, supporting the channel, liking the video, subscribing, hitting the bell to get notifications when I upload new videos. Thank you so much to my patrons and my members here on YouTube. It's to the point now where I don't really post on social media at all. I know that's not great for the channel, but yeah, I just end up posting stuff to Patreon and then to members here on YouTube. And yeah, I, I don't know when that shift happened, but it's really nice. It feels like old school YouTube or just like the start of your channel, right? When you only have a few people commenting, you can remember like, oh, that's so-and-so. I know that name and you know, I don't know. It's, it's nice. So yeah, I post random stuff on there. And then I also do two exclusive videos for tier two and tier three patrons and members. I do a vlog video just talking about whatever's going on with me and my kids and stuff like that. And then I do a controversial topic that is not about veganism. Usually I think I've had a couple that were like kind of, but um, yeah, usually it's just like, I don't know, the last one I did was on the shingles vaccine. One before that was on teacher pay, teacher salary. Post one of those a month. And um, yeah, thanks again, guys. New video soon. Partner and I watched this movie that was better than I thought it would be. I can't for the life of me remember what it was called, but it's about this like post-apocalyptic scenario where you have this young girl and she lives with a, an AI, like a, a big old robot with a lady voice and the girl believes that all humans are dead, I think, and that you can't go outside. It's not safe to go outside. And then she learns otherwise and learns that the, the mommy robot has been lying to her. And spoiler alert, turns out the mommy robot is behind all of it. Mommy decided that humans were dangerous, chaotic, and mean and wiped us all out in an attempt to start over. So she raises this girl and tries to raise her in, you know, a, a morally uh, appropriate way by, by herself without others, which I mean, I, I don't know, that could influence things negatively. <laughs> but anyway, at the end, it kind of seems like she achieved her goal, at least as far as making like the, the type of human she wanted to make. Now, then that human has to go, you know, it's silly. It's stupid sci-fi shit, but uh, it was better than a lot of sci-fi shit. Moral and existential. Hello, I was just talking about you, sir. Actually, I don't think you're a gnat. I don't know who you are, but you're a bug. You're all the same. You're not a bug, actually. Beetles are bugs. I don't know. Like most things we call bugs aren't actually bugs. It's so annoying. I hate that I know that. <laughs> That's the problem with having kids. They teach you a bunch of shit. You don't want to know. <laughs> I think my favorite dumbest take, of course, Elon Musk. <laughs> he thought the best way to handle AI would be to create a maximally curious AI because human curiosity has always led to compassionate decision-making, right? <laughs> it's never led us to, I don't know, experiment on other sentient beings. <laughs> New fun injury. I've got this weird thing going on with my like the front of my hip is that is that your hip i'm not actually sure <laughs> what the hip is anyway it's like the very top of the like the quad the hip flexor right it's like right there right like at the groin i guess but in front and it hurts and it hurts when i step it seems to be getting worse it started i'm not even sure it started a while ago but it was kind of on and off and for the last since yesterday morning, I guess, it's been constant. And it's not terrible or anything. I can't feel anything right now, but it's not great. And I, it, the, the fact that it seems to be progressing is uh, a little concerning. So 
partners like go see a doctor. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> what are they going to do? I'm be like, oh, it's inflammation. You want a steroid shot? But maybe not. I'm, I'm joking kind of, but uh, yeah, I, I will definitely make an appointment with my primary if this is still going on a week from now. Do I really mean that? Well, it'll be almost Christmas time. I can't make an appointment then. Might as well wait till January, but January's crazy too. Might as well wait for February. 